Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, primarily about basal joint arthroplasty. First, I'm going to kind of introduce some concepts about arthritis of the hand, <coughs> specifically talk about basal joint arthroplasty, then introduce the topic of uh, total wrist arthroplasty, and then we're going to have Dr. Vitale come up and finish it with some uh, observations both from Columbia and Mayo on total wrist arthroplasty, which is certainly uh, changing uh, for the better, it appears. Um, so first, uh, what about the incidence of arthritis in the hand? Arthritis is by far more common in the distal joint, the end joint of the finger or the thumb, more so than the basal joint, more so than the PIP joint, middle joint, and more so than the metacarpophalangeal joint, the main knuckle joint. That's statistically the most common uh, arthritis. However, the surgery uh, varies. The, the surgery is much more common in the basal joint of the thumb, next in the PIP joint, and the DIP joint, which is the most common form of arthritis, is a distant third. We, we rarely operate on the DIP joint, uh, uh, except under very specific indications. So why is that? Uh, there's a difference, uh, the, the, the difference in incidence of arthritis versus surgery is based on two things. Number one is the uh, natural history of the disease. For instance, in the distal joint, you frequently will see people who have a deformed distal joint. It will be quite symptomatic when you first see them and you treat them with anti-inflammatories and so forth. And most of the time, it will uh, resolve. Uh, when I say resolve, I mean the pain will resolve. It will look the same on the x-ray. It will still look like an arthritic joint, but very few, few people complain or certainly complain enough that they won't have anything done. Uh, and also the functional importance. The basal joint of the thumb is critically important to anything you do in terms of gripping, positioning your hand, and there's, it's a complex motion in that joint, number one, and there's tremendous forces across that joint with something as simple as picking up a carton of milk. Uh, so that's an important joint, and th those are the reasons why there's a variation in the surgery. So I'm going to specifically talk about basal joint arthritis, which is the most common thing we operate in, uh, most common arthroplasty in the hand. So here's the thumb. There's uh, three joints. The, the distal joint and the metacarpophalangeal joint in this thumb are normal. And if you look here, the basal joint is abnormal as compared to these. It's narrowed. It's got a little spur developing here. It's got a fragment that's uh, uh, dislodged here. And uh, the next joint down, we'll see it better. You can see it's a little bit asymmetrical here, but it basically looks, looks pretty good. Uh, we covered that already. So here's a magnified view of the same thing. So the, the uh, distal joint is arthritic here. This joint, which is between, between the scaphoid and the trapezium, the basal joint of the thumb is between the trapezium bone, which is in the wrist, and the metac thumb metacarpal bone. This is between the scaphoid and the trapezium, and it's a little bit narrowed over here, as you can see on the outside, and I'll, I'll tell you uh, that, that has some importance. So basal joint arthroplasty, it looks like there's a lot here, but there's not. There's basically 98, 99% of orthopedic surgeons do one of two things. The first four in this category are essentially the same operation with, with slight variations. And the last is a, a joint replacement. When I say joint replacement, I mean putting an artificial substance in. These are arthroplasty joint replacements without putting an artificial substance in. So the, the simple one is a trapeziectomy where the trapezium bone, which I'll show you again, is removed. And that's all just removed, and uh, the capsule is closed, and that uh, has given actually good results, better than one would have anticipated. All of the other procedures are providing some kind of support so the metacarpal bone, the thumb metacarpal, doesn't collapse too much and shorten and doesn't shift out of place, and I'll show you what I mean by that. And the joint replacement procedures have in general, uh, there have been a lot of them come on the market, and a lot of them left, and most orthopedic surgeons who do hand surgery and do this specific joint replacement, specific arthroplasty, excuse me, don't use artificial materials, although some still do. So that's the joint that's going to be replaced. So first of all, I'm going to talk about what we don't do and the reasons we don't do it. Here's a uh, silastic or silicone, whoops, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back here. Silastic or silicone implant. Uh, very good alignment after the procedure, but you see these little dark areas developing here and down here. There's a, a condition called silicone synovitis, which has been well documented in the hand, and uh, the high percentage of these have to be revised. Here's one that was an art. This looks like a little hip replacement, uh, and there's a few things that are wrong with this, not just one thing. It's loosened here. It's eroding through the trapezium bone. 
And most importantly, do you remember that the scaphotrapezial joint on the that initial x-ray being a little bit narrowed in one area? It's fairly common that that joint will go on to develop arthritis, even if it doesn't look like it has much to begin with. Sometimes you do see it in the beginning. This whole joint, sorry, is now arthritic here. So not only do you have to deal with this, but now you've got another arthritic joint down here. This, uh, like, uh, where's Dr. Fiore? What's that called again? Well, they, they couldn't use them in the spine, so they decided to put them in the thumb. <laughs> and uh, it was an equally bad idea in the thumb, I think. And uh, that's pretty much been abandoned. Uh, this was a Gore-Tex implant. I have to say that all of, none of these are our patients, of course, because we didn't do any of these. But uh, this has a tremendous foreign body reaction. Look, look at all the cystic changes in the surrounding joints and clearly is gonna fa has failed. Uh, this is the latest and greatest, the Artelon spacer. We've had patients come in the office and I, I tell them what I think we should do, and they say, well, I have a friend or I've heard about this Artelon spacer. It's the latest and the rehab is quicker and, and they're very, very, uh, my friends are pleased with the results. Uh, and in the short term, it's, it's pretty good, but this is a paper that was presented in sep just this past September at our annual meeting. Uh, and this is fairly short term. I think there's about two years or so. 32% had to be removed. I mean, it's just hard to believe that someone's put, still putting these in, but they are. Here is a uh, slide from a removal. This shows a foreign body granuloma reaction. This is a stain that, that shows the foreign bodies in that bluish color here. So uh, not something you want to do. So what do we do? H here's what most people do. This I usually do the first one on that list, ligament reconstruction, tendon interposition, and I'll show you why. It doesn't have to be done that way. If you look at the pre-op view, here's where the arthritis is, the basal joint. And if you look here, you see if you, if you kind of extended a line from the, the scaphoid here, here's the radius. The, the uh, metacarpal is significantly radial to that line. And the reason for that is there's an adductor muscle that comes into the metacarpal, which pulls it into the thumb as the arthritic uh, process is uh, continuing. And there's a abductor pollicis longus tendon that comes and attaches right here, and that kind of pulls it out. So it, it kind of subluxes. It doesn't dislocate, but it shifts a bit. So when one does the arthroplasty, this is post-op, you can see how the alignment of the thumb is kind of aligned with the scaphoid, which is the way it should be. If one just removes the trapezium, you can actually have good pain relief, but there's going to be a tendency for that to shift a little. Now, it may not make a difference in a lot of patients, particularly low-demand elderly patients, but it may in a younger patient. Here's just a magnified view of that. So what, what is done is the trapezium bone is removed. This is the trapezoid bone, which is kind of behind the trapezium bone. You can kind of see it here. That articulates with the index metacarpal. So the trapezium is removed completely. Uh, it's aligned with the uh, scaphoid, and you can kind of see a little bit of the tunnel that's here, that, uh, and we use one of the tendons to reconstruct the ligament, so that stays aligned. If you just remove the trapezium, you get a good pain relief result, as I said, but it'll tend to shift a little bit with time. It may or may not make a difference. Here's uh, something that frequently happens. This is a little bit more severe case, and as this is pulled out and subluxes more, the thumb really comes into the palm, and it becomes extraordinarily difficult to, for people to grasp anything. And secondarily, this joint becomes lax. And you can see that there. This lady actually, if you stressed her, she came out to 90 degrees here. So this is a basal joint arthroplasty, just like we did before, but we had to do something for this. She wanted to try and preserve some motion, so we advanced the volar plate. You could either do that or fuse the joint. There's nothing wrong with fusing the joint, but uh, she preferred not to do that. Um, so that's the story on basal joint arthroplasty. Most people do a resection arthroplasty. It's reliable, durable, predictable. The, uh, the uh, joint replacements that have been uh, set, brought forth for replacing the joint with artificial material, most of them have not been successful, the vast majority. Uh, I'll just introduce total wrist arthroplasty. That's been around for a long time. Uh, when I was training, which is many, many years ago, we did total wrist arthroplasties and we abandoned them because of the complications. And this has gone on through cycles over the years. And uh, each time there's a new implant that's going to solve our problems. And so far, it hasn't happened, except maybe. Um, the uh, problems you can see up there, component loosening, tendon imbalances, dislocation, tendon ruptures, for low infection rate, but a very high revision rate, very high failure rate. 
to the point where the kind of the gold standard for the treatment of arthritis of the wrist has been a wrist fusion or a partial wrist fusion, which obviously is limiting, just like the elbow um, fusion was. Um, but it still worked better than a failed uh, wrist replacement. Uh, you don't, a person who has a normal wrist on one side and a wrist fusion can actually do pretty well. But someone who needs motion uh, or a patient who has multiple joint involvement really use, can they use the wrist motion. It makes a big difference in their life. So I'll end with this slide. And this was at the same meeting we attended in uh, September. And this was a prospective multi-center series of the most recent generation of total wrist arthroplasty. Uh, and the good thing about this was it was multi-center. It was not, uh, as is frequently the case, a series by, with the author of which is the person who developed the implant. Uh, and this was the, the best reported results that I've seen. That, that major breakthrough is not, uh, not my words. That's the words of uh, Dr. Herzberg, the author. And the uh, success rate was much better than about four to eight years. The uh, failure rate, the complication rate, was much less than previously reported. So this is certainly gives uh, room for some optimism here. And Dr. Vitelli will carry on.